This is Ted. He's been a police officer for 25 years, and everyone he works with loves him. His bosses want to promote him and tell him if he applies for a promotion, he'll get it, as long as he meets the basic criteria. Ted wants a promotion, so he looks at the criteria to apply and sees that it requires a bachelor's degree. Decades ago, he started a degree in nutrition, but dropped out to become a police officer. Ted decides to finish that nutrition degree in order to get the promotion from the police department. What I just described to you is insanity. And I'll tell you why in a second. Because Ted isn't alone. His daughter Stephanie might be in school with him. She's had a small photography business for a while and has a great portfolio of pictures she has taken for local businesses. She'd like to get a job as a photographer for a larger marketing firm. With proven experience in the field, all she needs is a bachelor's degree. Wait a minute. What I just described to you sounds crazy, but it happens all the time. Why does Ted need to finish a degree in nutrition so that he can get a promotion as a police officer for a position that his boss already has told him he would be great at? Why does Stephanie need courses in philosophy, biology, and history to get a job as a photographer when she already has a portfolio that proves she can do the job. In fact, a 2022 study showed that 60% of jobs require a bachelor's degree when only 25% of jobs will actually have requirements where you need the skills you learned from the bachelor's degree. Why are we required to have bachelor's degrees that are gonna cost at least $40,000 in tuition that leave you $33,000 in, in student debt on average? They're gonna take the average student about four years all just for job requirements and, and job positions that aren't even gonna use the skills we're learning. This channel is about beating this unethical system through competency-based learning, which you can learn more about up here. And the answer to today's question is going to be a dark and scary journey into the mysterious past where we're going to uncover greed, laziness, and perhaps worst of all, incompetence. And once you understand the history of how college became both less valuable and more essential to getting a job, you'll understand the purpose of this channel and why we college hack. To understand why college is such a scam these days, we need to follow the money. So let's go back 40 years and talk about retirement plans. Back in the day, really up into the 80s, the most popular retirement plan for Americans was the pension. Pensions are a retirement benefit where you work for the company until you retire, and then once you retire, they basically keep giving you a yearly pension's worth of money until you die. To me as a millennial, this sounds insane, but that's how they did it, and how some companies, particularly actually the government does this a lot, still do it today. Companies would have a pension fund that they contributed to, and they'd pay somebody else to like manage it in the stock market, and then when they needed to pay pensions to people, they'd pull it out of the pension fund. And the higher your salary when you retired, and the longer you'd worked for the company as a whole, the more of a pension you would get when you retired. Because your pension was tied to how long you worked for the company, people were heavily disincentivized from switching jobs or moving to a different company mid-career. That could either cause you to lose your pension or make it dramatically smaller. Well, this was working out okay for a while, but there was a big problem with the pension system. Pensions were first seriously used in the U.S. starting in about the mid-1800s, and back then, the average lifespan of an American was about 40 years. So no big deal, right? Like, you could give somebody a pension and pay them money when they retired, but chances were they weren't going to live very long, and so you would not be paying much of a pension at all. But the medical field got way better, and by the 1980s, the average American lifespan had risen to age 73. And if you're retiring at 65, that's another eight years that the company has to pay you a salary for doing nothing. Now that sounds cool to you and me, but pension funds were getting depleted, and so companies were finding themselves having to contribute more and more of their profits to, to paying all of these pensions they owed for these ex-employees who just wouldn't die. Then, in 1978, Congress created a new tax code that we know as 401k. Back in the day, if you were going to you know, take earnings and save them for retirement, first you'd get taxed on the money you made, and then you'd put it into the stock market, and when you pulled it out of the stock market, you'd also pay taxes on the profits. So you're paying taxes twice. The 401k tax code made it so that you could either get taxed on the front half, or you could get taxed on the back half, but that was it. No one took it seriously at first, but as the 80s started rolling on, companies took notice, and they were like, you know, this might be better than pensions. So they started telling employees, if you put like 
2 to 5% of your paycheck into your 401k, we will match it and pay the same amount. Now the benefit was paid up front and they didn't have to worry about paying pensions for years on years on end after somebody retired. And this was genius on their part. Let's say a person starts with a company at $30,000 a year and ends at 90,000. We'll pretend like their average salary throughout their time there is about 60,000 and that they worked for the company for 40 years. In a typical pension calculation, they'd be getting paid about 72,000 a year after retirement until they died, which over eight years would be $576,000. That's $576,000 of retirement benefits that the company has to pay, half a million dollars. But with the 401k model, if we're looking at that same employee, if an employer matches at the high end around like 5% of salary, they're only gonna pay $120,000 over the course of an employee's time at the company. That's way less, that's a huge savings for the business. Plus, since the 401k is in the stock market, the company doesn't have to worry if the market goes south. Like they don't have to worry about making up lost pension funds. That's up to the employee. If the market goes south, it's the employee who has to worry about their money not being, you know, their stocks not being worth as much. Of course, the cool thing is that for employees, this is a win-win because if the market continues to behave as it has, and like say you're invested in something super simple like the S&P 500, you will still retire with more money than that half a million you could have expected from your company. With all the math above and all the percentages and everything, you could be looking at retiring with $2 million in savings. But nothing's that simple. And trading pensions for 401ks had consequences. Consequences related to bachelor's degrees. I promise we're getting there. If you had a pension, you wanted to stay with the company that you were working with for your whole life. That's how you got a good retirement. But if you're not tied down by a pension, that means you can go where the grass is greener. Not being paid enough, don't like your boss, want to switch careers, no worries. Just apply to another job and go there. Your 401k will just follow you. And people did start changing jobs. Like baby boomers hardly ever switched jobs. Gen X started switching jobs more. And millennials can't stop switching jobs. We love it. We're addicted to it. Basically, in this day and age, there's a study that shows that the average person will switch career-related jobs. We're not talking like movie theaters and drive through working in high school, but like career-based jobs. They will switch 12 times over their career. So employees now had way more freedom to level up their careers, get more money, get a cooler job, whatever, but businesses now had a new problem. They were spending tons of money on recruitment and training of all these new people they were hiring to fill the spots of the people who were quitting. More new people meant more paid on the job training, which cut into profits and kept businesses from being efficient. So what did companies do? Instead of saying, well, golly gee, that whole pension switcheroo kind of backfired. No, they went and made another big change. Suddenly, starting in the 90s, a ton of businesses started requiring bachelor's degrees for job positions where you did not actually need the knowledge you learned in the bachelor's degree. You want to be a secretary? Get a degree. Want to do customer service? Get a degree. Want to do basic data entry or clerical work? Get a degree. You eventually want to get promoted into management despite having had like decades worth of experience in this field and working in this department? Get a degree. Companies did this because there were so many people switching jobs and there was so many applications and resumes to sort through that they were like, well, what if we just weed out everybody who doesn't have a bachelor's degree? This was lazy, this was smart, and this was also dumb. Companies lost out on a lot of people who didn't have degrees, but who would have done fantastic work in their positions. I mean, but I guess they did save time on skimming through resumes and doing interviews. But you want to know the truly ridiculous part? When a lot of these companies hire somebody with a bachelor's degree that's supposed to qualify this person to be able to do this job, you know what the first thing they do with that person is? They put them through on-the-job training anyway. Why, if I'm just going to learn everything I need to know in on-the-job training, did I need to get a four-year college degree that cost me over $50,000? The same job that used to require a high school degree to get it, now requiring a $50,000 degree? That is criminal, that is unethical, that is not good. But businesses weren't the only ones to blame. Colleges made a bad situation worse by raising tuition and lowering the values of their degrees. But we're going to talk about that in a video 
next week, where we're going to explore college's fault in all of this mess. For now, we have one big question. What do we do now? The easiest way to fix this whole snafu would be if businesses just stopped requiring bachelor's degrees unnecessarily. And a lot of big companies have made pledges to not require bachelor's degrees for positions. Companies like Apple and Google and, and, and Microsoft. And as more of the big players do this, more small and medium-sized companies will do this. And, and who knows, maybe we'll just see this problem fixed. Though, I mean, it could be decades. It could be a really long time before it is. In the meantime, if you're trying to get a job that requires a degree but you don't want to spend the unnecessary time and the expensive money on getting that degree you really should try college hacking if you want to go to college for the joy of the learning and for expanding your mind and to get into the liberal arts and all of that stuff please like do that that's amazing take courses pay the full cost all this good stuff i have so much respect for somebody who is just going to college to learn like that's what college should be about but if your future is being held hostage by job requirements that, that mean that you need a bachelor's degree for some unknown reason, then you should try college hacking because what it does is we use competency-based learning and alternative credits to prove knowledge in areas that correlate to college courses so that you can graduate quicker and faster. So we use like tests like CLEP or third-party courses like Sophia, which I have a bunch of videos about on this channel, to prove competency in a skill or in a knowledge area like history or college writing. And if your college, and if your college accepts that form of competency-based learning, then awesome, you get college credit for what took you probably just a couple of weeks and maybe like a hundred bucks instead of having to take a full college course for it. Some colleges will even let you do the majority of their degree through competency-based methods. And if you can do that, and if you're able to use stuff like CLEP or SOFIA and other competency-based learning methods to prove mastery in an area, that's great, you get college credit, move on to the next one. People who hack the college system routinely graduate for under $10,000 and, and many in under a year. Some will take longer and some will pay more, but everybody can graduate college faster and cheaper if they ignore the way it's always been done. Because let's be honest, requiring everybody to have a bachelor's degree to do entry level work that doesn't require the knowledge of the bachelor's degree is also not how it's always been done. I remember myself when I was 14, I decided there was no way I was going into debt for college. And I also realized that four years at college was like a lifetime and I had so many other things I wanted to do. So I started taking CLEP exams and, and you know, doing them alongside my high school courses and I started passing them. I earned college credit and as a result, I graduated college at age 18 for $7,423. I went on to get an awesome liberal arts master's degree in English literature. I eventually got a job as the chair of an entire degree program at a big school, and I got my PhD. College hacking can work a lot better than the default system that most people use, and I and thousands of other people like me out there doing this are the proof. So this week, we've talked about how college degrees became such big requirements unnecessarily. Next week, we're going to talk about how colleges made it worse. But if you're excited and ready to go and want to learn more and want to start planning your college hacking experience and get that degree and get that job, then check out a link in the description, set up a consultation with me, and we'll make it happen. I usually save people over two years worth of time and over $20,000 in just a single session. Thanks for watching. I hope that you learned a few new things and maybe have a little bit less respect for the, the system that businesses have created. Um, next week, we're gonna have that video about how colleges made the situation worse. Until then, I'm Clifford Stemme. Thank you for watching and happy hacking.